Hey everyone, I'm Dan Spada, and in today's video, I'm showing you how to use Nearpod. Nearpod is a free tool that allows teachers to create interactive lessons, videos, and formative assessments. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to go through the steps of using this with your students. So to begin, go to nearpod.com and you can select sign up for free. Or if you've used it in the past, you can go to log in. I'm going to sign up with Google. So once you've logged in, you come to the dashboard. There is a really great tutorial that walks you through step by step if you click see how it works. And so in the preview mode, it allows you to see the difference between the teacher device and the student device. So this is what it would look like for a student. So let's just click join. And you'll see as I go through on my teacher device, it'll also change on the student's device. And one of the things I love about this is students do not need to create an account. The students can just put that code in and they can participate in all the activities and the teacher can still see all of their responses. So you'll see on the student device asks, what is something you already know about the solar system? I'll put the sun is hot and submit that. And then over on the teacher's dashboard. So what you would see is you'd see the student's name and then their answer. And then it lets you know that 100% of the students have participated. I can then share student answers that removes their name so that the students can see everybody else's responses. I can also unshare it. There are activities. So you'll see this one is something that you match pictures to the words that define it. So on the student's device, uh, we'll click star and sun. So now that I've selected all of these, it lets you know that the student did four out of four, and it even tells you if they got one wrong, it'll let you know how many tries it took them to get the four matches. This is one of the diagram activities. So it allows the students to be able to fill in the blanks or draw on this. And then as the teacher, you'll see as the student is working on it. So now let's go through and let's do some text. Let's type earth. We'll move that down here. So you see that I've lined up earth. I can also, if I wanted to draw on this as a student, I can draw. And then from the teacher's side, I can click and see what's in progress. So I can see as the student is working on it, their answers, what they've drawn, what they've done. And once the student submits it, they still have a chance to edit. Uh, and the teacher can, again, look at the student's work. You can do exit ticket quizzes. Uh, so Mars is further from the sun than the Earth. Let's say false. How many days does it take for the Earth to revolve around the sun? 365. Uh, which of the following plants is not in the solar system. So as the student is answering the questions, you as the teacher will see in real time their score. So you'll see their selection. And if it's in red, it means it's incorrect. If it's in green, it means it's correct. And then blue is just no answer yet. But you'll see a graph for the class and how they're doing. And you can also share that so that they can see what the scores are. You can also poll your students. So how confident do you feel in the ability to describe the solar system? I feel very confident after doing this lesson. And then as the teacher, you'll see which students selected which response, as well as an overall graph showing you your class's responses. So now that I've shown you what you can do with Nearpod, let me show you how to set all of this up. So there's a few different ways you can get started. You can create your own lessons, videos, or Google Slides. So a lesson combines content, video, and activities. A video allows you to insert a video and then add interactive questions for the students. Or you can create lessons in Google Slides. So let's start by going to Lesson. And you can begin by creating from scratch or by choosing from uh, content, media, and activities that are already in the Nearpod library. So let's add a slide. 
and we can figure out what we want to add. Video, a slide, web content, Nearpod 3D, a simulation, virtual reality field trip, uh, BBC video, uh, Microsoft Sway, slideshow, audio, or PDF viewer. Let's start with a video. So you can select from the Nearpod video library, and you can sort these by standards, from your state, subjects, and grades. So if, say, I wanted to find a video on setting, there are several different videos, and it tells you where it comes from. So there's Nearpod Originals, here's McGraw-Hill, there's Teaching Without Frills, there's a TED Ed, there's all different kinds of things in here. Um, you can preview them by just clicking on the plus sign. Today, we're gonna talk about setting in just a minute. So at any just point, you can add an activity to these videos. So you can add open-ended question or multiple choice question. So I can put a question in and click save. And now and as a student is watching this video, in just a minute, the video will stop and then they'll be prompted to answer the question. You can also trim the video. So if there's only part of the video you wanted the students to see, so say for instance, you wanted them to see from 30 seconds to 45 seconds, let's say. You can say trim, and now the video will just be this 15 seconds. And then you can click save, and that's your first slide. So let's add another slide. In addition to the content, there's also several activities that you can insert. So things like time to climb, open-ended questions, matching pairs, quiz. You can insert a flip grid, a draw it, collaborative board, a poll, fill in the blanks, a memory test. So I hope you're starting to see the picture that although we don't have time in this video to go through all these activities and all the different types of content, there are lots of different options to help you build a really interactive and engaging lesson. So I wanna show you just a few more. So some of the things that are really cool are like these Nearpod 3D. So let's just do an animal cell. Let me show you what this looks like. So if you wanted to put in a 3D interactive slide, the students will actually be able to interact and move whatever the object is. So in this instance, you've got the cell and the students can kind of like zoom in and play around with this. And they have different categories. So there's amazing things in places, there's ancient times, there's environment, human body, and microscopic. And as I mentioned, this is a K to 12 tool. So there are a lot of higher level activities as well for high school students. So let's just select one of these. Let's go to uh, high school science. And you'll see there's all different types of simulations that you can do with your students. So let's just say uh, Beers Law Lab. Let's pick that. So let's just take this simulation. This is Beers Law Lab where you can add, uh, looks like you've got water. You can select how much water you put in. Uh, you can put in drink mix. And then it looks like you can see what the concentration levels are. Now, again, I don't claim to be a science expert, so there might be some science people out there that understand this much more than I do. Uh, but the point I wanted you to see is that there are all different types of interactive activities you can do with the students. So you can do like virtual simulations and labs. And I do just want to show you the virtual field trips. So let's just select one of these. Let's pick the Golden Gate Bridge. So the students would be able to go around and look to see what this is like. And if you have VR goggles, you'd be able to enter VR. So that's what it would look like with VR goggles. And just like before with any lesson, you can go to the bottom where it says preview. And you can see what this would look like for the students. And you can go from slide to slide and see uh, the student view before you send this out to the students. Now, as I mentioned, there is a Nearpod library. And just like before, you can look through standards, subjects, or grades. So let's select science. 
second grade. And let's select the water cycle. And this allows you to preview to see what the lesson is like. And if you like this lesson and you wanted to use it, you can just click add to my library. And now when I go back to my dashboard and go to my lessons, you'll see that the water cycle is in my lessons. And I can select student pace so that the students can do this on their own or live participation where I, as the educator, control the pace that the students are seeing everything at. I can also edit them. So I can go to edit lesson and I can go through each slide and I can either add my own content or I can remove some of the content that's already in here by simply right clicking and adding slide. I can add content or activity or I can delete. And the other thing I wanna show you is that with the free version, you can still use your existing Google Slides. So if I go to Create and then Lessons, I can upload files and I can select from my Google Drive. And so I just selected a set of slides that I want to use. I can either upload them as a series of individual slides or a scrolling slideshow. So let's just say individual slides. And you'll see that it's processing. So now that it's loaded, you'll see I can go to add slide and I can add in any kind of content or activities like before. And so that'll be inserted into my existing Google Slides. So there are a few ways to actually share this with your students. So if you use one of the created lessons, you can hover over the thumbnail and you can select live participation plus Zoom, live participation or student paste. So as I mentioned earlier, if you want live participation where you as the teacher move the slides for your students, you'd select live participation. If you want it where the students go through on their own, you would select student paste. If you hover over a lesson and it doesn't have those options, simply click save changes and then you'll be able to share it with your students. So let's click live participation. And then you'll see that students join with a code and you can share this directly to Google Classroom, directly to Microsoft Teams. You can use the link or you can email it. So if I click Google Classroom, I can select a class and I can create it as an assignment. I can do a question, an announcement, or create material. And then you can write anything you want about it and it'll have the link for the students. Alternatively, students can go to nearpod.com enter in the code and then they'll be brought to the lesson. They can put in their name, select join lesson, and then they'll be on the screen and waiting for the teacher. So as you can see, there are a lot of reasons to be excited about using Nearpod. You all know that I love tools that can be used in a distance learning setting, in a physical classroom, or in a hybrid model, and Nearpod checks all those boxes. And one of the things that I really love is how quick and easy it is to create really engaging lessons with your students, whether you want to use one of the lessons from their library, whether you want to use your own or combine the two. Now, it's also important to note that I've only showed you the free features for Nearpod in this video, but there is a subscription model that allows you to use other features as well. Now, if you're using Nearpod in your class, please let us know how you're using it in the comments section below. And if you know of a teacher that could benefit from watching this video, please feel free to share it with them as well. If you haven't already, please take a second and click that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you get notified every time the EdTech Show has a new video. And if you haven't already, please take a second and follow me on Twitter at Dan Spada and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the EdTech Show. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.